Metacognition and Effective Teaching and Learning. This podcast examines 1. Metacognition, 2. Strategies of Metacognition, 3. Values of Metacognition, 4. Critical Thinking and 5. Concludes and Findings. Metacognition is critically important but often overlooked. What it is essentially is thinking about thinking. So in other words, knowing what you know and what you don't know. Cognition is what happens in your mind when you're thinking. It is the mental processes involved in gaining knowledge and comprehension. These processes are thinking, knowing, remembering, judging and problem solving. Metacognition is thinking about thinking, being aware of the processes going on in your head so you can maximize your learning and understand how you're making meaning of things. There are two levels of activity happening with metacognition. Metacognitive knowledge and self-regulation. Metacognitive knowledge refers to required knowledge about cognitive processes and knowledge that can be used to control cognitive processes. These are declarative knowledge, procedural knowledge and conditional knowledge. An example of this, a pupil may be aware that they are more productive with work in a quiet library as opposed to at home where they are distracted. Self-regulation refers to the processes that one uses to control cognitive activities to ensure a cognitive goal has been met. These are planning, monitoring and evaluating. So what exactly is the value of metacognition in the classroom? Well, as teachers, we expect our students to take in all of the information in the curriculum. But we rarely spend time actually showing them how to learn this information. We're always looking for new ways to keep our students engaged and interested, and metacognition can help this. If a student has good metacognitive skills, then they can take ownership for their own learning and not just wait to be spoon-fed all the information from the teacher. A lot of research shows that students associate success with pure good luck, but unfortunately they associate failure with a lack of ability. If we can show students how to take control of their learning, then they can see that there's a lot of things they can do to affect the results of this so-called lottery for good results. Metacognition can be very important for students with special educational needs and also gifted and talented students. Uh, For example, someone whose special uh, needs affects their ability to keep organized and to comprehend new information can benefit from this metacognitive training. This might be just focusing on skills that help them to get organized and to monitor their own progress. As we said, it's also very important for gifted and talented students. Um, It can promote self-discipline and also remove the myth that students feel they have to get everything right the first time. One of the main things being that they can come to realise that mistakes are not the end of the world but can also be an important learning experience and can lead to improvement. There's a number of ways in which we can promote the use of metacognition in the classroom. Um, For example, by allocating specific time for planning activities before we take them on, allocating time for reviewing at the end, and also praising the use of evaluation, planning and monitoring. Everyone thinks it's part of our nature to do so. But left unchecked, our thinking can be biased, distorted, or even prejudiced. We are not born with the skill to think critically, and even in our schools, we traditionally tend to teach our children what to think instead of how to think. Students should be taught to process information rather than just memorizing facts. Critical thinking is the art of analyzing and evaluating thinking with a view to improving it. Dr. Richard Paul 
Critical thinking covers the thinking processes that strive to get below the surface of something. Questioning, probing, analyzing, testing and exploring. Critical thinking requires detective-like skills of persistence to examine and re-examine an argument or problem. In order to take in all the angles and weigh up evidence on every side, to think critically is never to take something as face value or as it appears. Critical thinking forms the foundation of the higher order levels of Bloom's taxonomy. Analysis, synthesis and evaluation. Within education, the teacher who fosters critical thinking fosters reflectiveness in students by asking questions that stimulate thinking essential to the effective construction of knowledge. Critical thinking is a reflective thought. It suspends judgment, maintains a healthy scepticism and exercises an open mind. John Dewey Teaching students how to learn is as important as teaching them content. Here's a few simple strategies. Slow down. How to use it. Stop, read and think about the information. When to use it, when information appears to be important. What's it for? It helps to focus on important information. Another strategy is to activate prior knowledge. How to use it. First, stop to think about what you already know about the topic. When to use it, before you read something or start an unfamiliar task. And what's it for? Helps to make new information easier to remember. You can also draw diagrams and link items of information together and decide what's important. This can be used when there is a lot of factual information. This can help to reduce memory load. Another good strategy is to fit ideas together, relate main ideas to one another. A good time to use it is when thinking about complex information and when deep understanding is required. Once you know ideas are related, they are easier to remember. When reading documents, highlight headings, relevant words, previews and summaries. This is good because it will help you to become familiar with key concepts and helps you to focus on important points being made. Steps to encourage general metacognitive awareness. Make pupils conscious of the importance of metacognition. Develop knowledge of cognition. Promote learning environments that value and promote metacognitive awareness. Always make a checklist or a plan and know what strategies you're going to need. Always reflect and think about what worked well for you. The human brain is designed to look for shortcuts. As teachers, we must show pupils that we value metacognition and show its benefits. Knowing about cognition and its potential benefits greatly supports pupils in applying it to learning strategies.